after reeling off four straight losses to the Houston Rockets, they held a, excuse me, the Houston Rockets held a players only meeting. And the outcome was that Kevin McHale was fired. Assistant JB Bickerstaff will assume interim head coaching duties. And in his first night on the job, the Rockets snapped their losing streak, beating the Blazers in overtime. Now, prior to the game, Mavs coach Rick Carlisle spoke out on the McHale firing. I'm really shocked. Um, you know, it's just hard to believe that, that something like that could happen at this stage. And the guy you know, took, it, took the team unexpectedly to the conference finals last year. And, you know, to have this happen after 11 games, just, just, just uh, preposterous is the only word I can come up with. Stephen A., now that we have more information on the firing, do you think Kevin McHale um, being let go is a good thing? No, I don't. I think it's a shame. I think it's a travesty that he was let out of his job. I completely agree with Rich, with Rick Carlisle, who's one of the, he, who's a conscientious individual when it comes to the coaching fraternity, particularly as the president of the coaches association. Uh, the the work that he's done, how supportive he has been. There's a lot of guys that Rick Carlisle would not hesitate to speak up for, and accurately. So I might add, Brett Brown is another guy in Philadelphia. Is perpetually as they have been losing, uh, he's been put in a very untenable situation and you need coaches to remind the public of some things that coaches go through which are no fault of their own. In the case of Kevin McHale, let's be fair here. In some respects, there has always been leadership issues emanating out of Houston over the last two years. It was an argument that was made against them when they lost in the first round of Portland a couple of years ago. It was an argument about them up until they they came back from a 3-1 to one deficit last year against the Clippers in the Western Conference semifinals. But this man should not have been fired. It's 11 games into the season, fresh off a trip to the Western Conference finals. You don't fire a guy. After, a matter of fact, you're ten and a half months removed from giving him a three-year extension. Mm -hmm. You talked about how he knows what it takes to win a championship, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously, it's not about Kevin McHale. Mm -hmm. It's about the players. Now, before I get into Dwight Howard, which I am about to since I heard from the Houston Rockets last night, let me say this. James Harden's defense has been deplorable. I agree. James Harden is a superstar talent. James Harden can drop 45 like he did last night on anybody. But his defensive effort last season was exceptionally better than it had been in previous seasons past. Right now, the way James Harden is playing basketball, I could drop 30 on him. I mean, that's how horrible he's playing defense right now. And I have... I'll I, give you 20. I, 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 I'd say 30. I'm talking about the way he plays right. defense right now. And it's, it's because he's not trying. It's not because he can't play. James Harden can do what he wants on the basketball court. And he can be a pretty good defensive player when he wants to be and when he's motivated. But the effort is glaring on the defensive side of the ball. So in that regard... Their four-game losing streak before last night isn't totally on Dwight Howard's uh, uh, shoulders. I think people once again misconstrued what I said when you asked me, who do I blame most? I didn't say he was the only one, but to answer the question was, who do you blame most? It's Dwight Howard, and I still blame Dwight Howard. Mm. Here's why. Dwight Howard. 17 points, 11.6 rebounds. You know, since he's been in Houston in the playoffs, the average is at 18.9 and 13.9 rebounds. We know that the numbers are something that Dwight Howard will always get because he's too good not to and he's too formidable not to. What I'm addressing is leadership. What I'm addressing is impact. And whether it's because he's not getting the ball enough, whether it's because the environment is a bit too lax, wh whatever the reason is, Dwight Howard isn't the Dwight Howard that he was those years in Atlanta. I mean, Orlando, Skip. Yep. Not even, not, he wasn't even, even though to a lesser degree in L.A., he was still impactful. When Dwight Howard did something, it made a difference. That doesn't seem to be the case in Houston. That's all I was saying about that. The yep. reasons could be a multitude of things. But in the end, here is what it comes down to. I challenge anybody, and I'm not going to mention the person with the Houston Rockets, you know, really good person they weren't sitting there they, you know very respect they were just sending me numbers about the white howard that's all they did they didn't do anything wrong but they're coming to the defense of their own player all i'm saying in response is this i challenge any houston rockets fan in this nation
I challenge anybody in the city of Houston, I challenge anybody in that organization to tell me that if Dwight Howard was as ferocious and as impactful as he was when he was in Orlando, is McHale still the head coach of this team? I'd say he is. Mm. That's the point, because McHale is a big man's coach. McHale was supposed to be somebody assisting and helping him evolve more as a basketball player, not be the same guy or a tad bit less than yep. what he was. His health has something to do with it because Dwight Howard isn't 100% healthy. Yep. Don't get me wrong. But in the end, all I was trying to say is Dwight Howard hasn't been the Dwight Howard. We expected him to be in L.A., and we expected him to be when he signed for $88 million in Houston. Mm. There is no getting around that. But I can't ignore the fact that James Harden ain't helping because yep. his defense really, I mean, it's, the, the effort really looks sluggish. I, ain't, I, haven't, I haven't really watched every game. I've watched him about four or five times. The games that I've seen James Harden play, he hasn't shown up defensively. Just hasn't shown up. Sometimes he doesn't show up offensively. I mean, okay. just well, shooting just, so poorly. Well, I'm just saying, uh, but, not, if, you shoot, but no, if you know, shoot just... poorly, you shoot poorly. That's different than not I, I showing it. effort I on got defense. It. And to your point about Dwight, just to be fair about this, he had two knee issues last yes. year that were sounded pretty serious. Yeah, I, don't know. I wasn't talking about last year because he it. was injured. This is 41 games. They talked about in camp, we got to limit his minutes to protect his knees. Mm -hmm. And he played 40 last night. That included overtime. But I don't know. They didn't protect his knees. And 19 rebounds. And he had 19 rebounds. Didn't yes. score much, but it didn't matter because right. you want him to rebound and block shots. That's and right. Brought, block, That's right. What did he block? Three shots? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. I want to make the point right now that this team is not out of the woods because it won or stole that game at home last night. You realize they were down 15 going to the fourth quarter. Mm. And all credit to James Harden and to Corey Brewer because they stepped up in the fourth quarter with yeah. 17 and 13 points right. respectively. Mm -hmm. But you know what happened at the end of regulation? It took an extremely, if we could see that, ill-advised pass cross court from James Harden on the fly. Look at this. I mean, that should have been intercepted. And Corey Brewer just catches it on the fly and just flings it from three, and it goes in, and that forces overtime at the buzzer, okay? So how, th that's a little lucky. That was a minor miracle. Very, really, okay? very lucky. So, but they did pull it off, so now there's a feel-goodness coming back to this team. I did like what Kelvin Sampson told the Houston Chronicle, obviously an ex-Rockets assistant, now coaching the University of Houston, mm -hmm. and he predicted, knowing this team as well as he does, they will go on a run now to either show that Kevin wasn't the reason that they weren't playing to, 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 or, or to show that, they, that he was. You know, one way or the other, they're going to react to this in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to put the responsibility on the man who took it at the press conference yesterday. We haven't talked about him, but Les Alexander owns this team, and he said at the press conference, I've never seen my team play as poorly and with less effort. Now, again, this is through 11 games. You know, it's okay, but he's saying never. You know, he's never seen his team. He, he interjects, but I'm not attributing that to the coach. I just had to do something. So this is a classic case of you can't fire the players, so fire the coach. You have panicked. You, you, this is pure early season panic. And to Rick Carlisle's point, it was preposterous. To your point, it was a travesty. I don't get it. I, I've never trusted this team's basketball character. That's just me. Deep down, whatever this team is made of, as it revolves around its superstars, I don't love it. Mm -hmm. And I think Kevin McHale actually did a lot to, to help that, to, to give them some credibility on the bench of a Hall of Fame player who's been a pretty good coach. And by the way, I do expect Kevin to wind up back with the T-Wolves, where he, you know he's from Minneapolis, played at University, or not from there, but he's from the state. Mm -hmm. Yes, Hibbing actually, but he played at the University of, of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and you know he was coach for a couple times. So I, I expect him to go back, and I expect him to be successful wherever he goes well, because he's a really good coach. I don't expect him to go back and coach in Minnesota. Let Sam Mitchell, the former coach of the year, well, I mean, get a chance. He'll be, he'll be yes, involved. Right. Yeah, yeah. Be involved in some other capacity. Yeah, right, not the right. GM though, because we didn't do that great of a job as a GM. He was actually a better coach than the GM. But that's beside the. Point. I will say to you, I totally agree with you about maybe that's what it is 
when we're talking about this team. Maybe it's the character mm -hmm. of the team. Yep. Because, again, when you're three years in with these guys and you're still looking for leadership inside that locker room, you would think James Harden is, but they're saying no, 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 that he's feeling himself or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to accuse him of that because I don't know that. Yep. But I will tell you that's what folks were saying yesterday. There, was, there the was a story about how he's been aloof with his team. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. So right. You got that going on. With the White Howard, I'm thinking about only five shots last night mm -hmm. in 40 minutes. Yep. How does the White Howard only get five shots? And so when you look at it from that perspective, maybe that's involved in it or what have you. He's not being you know, paid attention to enough. He's not getting enough touches. Whatever the case may be, when I say blame, I'm not saying it like, oh my goodness, he sabotaged Kevin McHale. Yep. I'm saying that whether it's due to health or something else, Dwight Howard doesn't seem like Dwight Howard. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with what impacts Kevin McHale. Because if Dwight Howard was what he was supposed to be when he arrived from Orlando, this team continues on successfully. Yep. It ju it's just that simple. It is. And, 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 and maybe, again, maybe we point to what? Kobe and them alluded to when they talked about Dwight. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Dwight's attitude like, the sun will shine tomorrow. It's beautiful here in Texas. People love me. I love them. I'm paying no state income tax while I'm getting this money. Yeah. Like, not like I was paying the 12.3% the mm -hmm. state income tax in L.A. I, I, I'm good. I'm good. Life is fine. The sun will shine tomorrow. Well, guess what? When you're playing with dudes that want to win, that's not, that doesn't help you. Yeah. You can't it, it, you, even though, literally speaking, you're going to get beyond it and move forward, you literally cannot have the attitude that, you know, life will be fine, so what, I lost the game. It's yep. got to really kill you. I agree. And it never looks like it kills Dwight Howard. So there were some suggestions in the Houston media that Kevin McHale had lost the locker room. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you lose it in 11 games after you finished second in the West last year in record and in, in the playoffs, right? Well, how do you lose it in 11, and why wouldn't the owner give well, you a chance to win back the locker room? There was a meeting, and it was supposed to be a players-only mm -hmm. meeting where nothing was going to get revealed, and I saw three different stories. Mm -hmm. Three different stories uh, with multiple sources. So clearly there were individuals inside that meeting who wanted the information to get out that they were not vibing with Kevin McHale. So there's but, but no... They were also not vibing with James Harden from those, right. so, those so, reports, so right? So whether you want to sit there and say James Harden, because I'm certainly not going to put this part on Dwight Howard, but the point is, is that the team itself as players... Got Kevin McHale fired? I agree. Simple that is, as that. In the end. Is it in the end. That's what they did. Yep. They got him fired. Because they had that meeting. Mm -hmm. James Harden was fifth in player efficiency last season. He is 23rd now. Coming up next, is President Barack Obama a bad man? He seems to think so. We'll explain his comments when we come back. I can't wait for this topic. Mm. I mean, this is unbelievable. You need to show him more respect. You can say that nonsensical stuff and then the top that off. You're moody. I'm not joking, bro.